This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 4, Section 3, Distinguishing Among Atoms. In this section, you're going to explain what makes elements and isotopes different from each other and how to calculate the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in an atom. So first is foremost, you need a periodic table. Hopefully, I've given you one already. This is going to be your reference sheet for the rest of the year, your cheat sheet. We're going to add some things to it. You only get one, so make sure your name gets on top just in case you leave it behind. Now the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is find the key because different periodic tables have different keys. What do I mean by that? Well here's a simple uh, periodic table where it only gives us four things but here's the key. It tells us what each of those things in each of those element boxes represents. So that's really important to locate this key because we're going to maybe add some things to it. On this periodic table it's down here in the bottom left and as you know Notice, it's a little bit more complicated. It gives us a few more details. And on this periodic table, excuse me, oops, um, same spot, bottom left, but again, uh, it's going to give us different things, but everything is um, defined. Everything is told what each of those things mean in each of those boxes. Okay, so for this particular chapter, we're interested in two numbers, the atomic number and the atomic mass. What I'd like you to do is actually pause the video, locate them on your periodic table, those two numbers, and see what you notice about them as you look through the periodic table. Hopefully this makes sense. The atomic number you should have noticed goes in order by ones. So one, two, three, four, five. So if I give you an atomic number for an element, it should be really easy to find. You kind of focus on a number and you're going to go either lower than that or higher than that. And if you notice, it just goes literally in order as if you're reading a book from left to right, then the next row, left to right, and then the next row. Okay. And of course we call them periods. But how about the atomic mass? What are some things that you noticed about those numbers? And sometimes it's also called the atomic weight on the periodic table. Did you notice that they're not whole numbers, they're decimals? Did you notice that they're always bigger than the atomic number of that particular element? And did you notice that most of the time it increases like the atomic number, but there are going to be some exceptions. And if you didn't catch those exceptions yet, I'm going to note, you're going to notice them later on when we get to the periodic table unit. So right now you should have your packet out, which you should already have, your periodic table, and a calculator because we're going to do a little calculating, a little bit of subtraction, hint, 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 uh, but again, you'll always have access to a calculator. So pause the video, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. So the atomic number is the number of protons, and it also equals the number of electrons. So atomic number equals protons, equals electrons. So what do I want to bring to your attention? Protons never change. That particular number or the number of protons will identify that element. The protons never, ever, ever, ever change. However, the number of electrons can vary. Some elements like to lose electrons and some elements gain electrons when they're in the bonding process. So that atom then becomes an ion. It becomes a charged positive or a charged negative ion. So the electrons do change. So like I said, that periodic table of yours is a cheat sheet. Locate your key, maybe find the atomic number and give yourself a, ooh, that atomic number equals protons equals electrons. Now how about the atomic mass versus mass number? Sometimes we use this term interchangeably, but they really do mean two totally different things. The atomic mass is the mass of the entire atom, okay? So it's gonna be the entire number. And it's a decimal number because it's an average of the isotopes. And we'll talk about more in detail what isotopes are soon. But the mass number, really, we're gonna take our atomic mass Mass and round to a whole number because that's going to help us give us the number of neutrons. How? Well, again, the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So this number, when we take our atomic mass and round it to a whole number, it's going to give us the number of protons and neutrons. So think about this for a moment. 
if we have to do some calculations and help us find the number of neutrons, there's never a half of a neutron or a 0.2 of a neutron. So this is why we have to take that atomic mass and round to a whole number. So just as a reminder, uh, we've talked about rounding before, but just in case, if you have a number of 0.4, zero to 0 0.4 range that number stays the same so in other words 37.4 just stays 37. however if that 0.5 to 0.9 range is in the number then we're going to round up so that 37.5 equals 38 and i know some math teachers like to say four and below let it go five and above give it a shove so that's just a little mnemonic to help you remember that so what can we do? Aha, we're going to put on our periodic table cheat sheet that our average atomic mass or atomic mass or atomic weight, whatever our key says, we're going to say the mass number is going to round to a whole number and it equals protons plus neutrons. So sometimes the mass number and atomic number are represented by the letters A and Z and it looks like this. So how do we know which number is which? Well, I like to remember it by two things. Number one, I like to remember ma. So the mass numbers on top and the atomic numbers on the bottom, ma. But just like we said before, the mass number is always bigger number, right? It's always bigger than the atomic number. So I just like to remember that, oh, the bigger number got to be the mass number. But a lot of professors, a lot of textbooks like to use this notation of the symbol, the mass, and the atomic number all together. So it looks like this. So elements are sometimes written with that top number being the mass number again, the bigger number, the bottom number being the atomic number or the smaller number, or you can remember ma. So here's two examples. Hydrogen will be one and one. Lithium, ooh, atomic number three, so he should be easy to find. And if you look at that mass number, uh, you're going to round it to a whole number and put it on there. So pause the video and see if you can come up with the two numbers for argon and the two numbers for PD. Hopefully, hopefully you found argon, and I'm actually going to give you the atomic number first, because this way, if you did not find argon, now it should be easy to find argon, atomic number 18. Now find its atomic mass and round it to the proper mass number. Hopefully you get 40. And again, for PD, if you didn't find it yet, number 46, pause the video, find the atomic mass. Take that atomic mass round to a whole number to get the mass number of 106. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, this is just a different way of representing um, the element and how, um, how the mass and the number uh, are there. So pause the video and can you answer this question with AU being the, uh, the chemical symbol for gold? And if it's written this way, can you give me the number of electrons? Hopefully you can because you know that the atomic number, this bottom smaller number, is the atomic number which also gives us the number of electrons in a neutral atom. So how do we find the number of neutrons? Well, if you know what the atomic number equals and if you know what the mass number equals, how do we calculate the number of neutrons? Hopefully that makes sense. We take the two numbers and subtract them. And again, the mass number is going to be that whole number minus the atomic number, which is already a whole number. And this is where that calculator comes in handy. So again, here's that uh, equation. And we want to remember that the number of neutrons will change because of isotopes. So again, can we put this on our periodic table cheat sheet? Of course you can. So the number of neutrons is going to equal that mass number, which you already have written down that, uh, minus the atomic number. So do you see any patterns? Here's a list of the first 10 elements. Do you see any kind of pattern? Hopefully, the atomic number equals the number of protons, which also equals the number of electrons. Again, let me remind you, as a neutral atom, all three of those numbers are going to equal each other, which is going to be very helpful later on.
So for your practice problems, you should be able to do number one and two right now on your own. So pause the video, then do number one and two, then play the video to check your answers. Then for number three is a chart. And in number three, we're going to first go over where to locate some of that information or how to calculate, calculate that column of information. Then we're going to actually do row the first row of that chart, and then you can finish up and play the video and check your answers. So hopefully at this point, you've paused the video, you've read over numbers one and two, hopefully you got these as your answer. If you did not get these as your answer, then please maybe make a note in the margins. Hey, ask Mrs. O'Neill about this next time we have class. And hopefully number two, again, if it's asking you for the number of neutrons, you're going to take the mass minus number, the numbers they gave us, I gave you, and subtract them. Now let's look at this chart. So the first thing I want to do is see these lines up here. Let's go through. Let's go through and say, okay, where can we find the element name? Well, that comes right from the periodic table. Where can you get the symbol? Periodic table. Atomic number? Periodic table. Atomic mass? Periodic table. Now remember, for the periodic table, I'm sorry, for the, for the atomic mass, we want to remember we're writing all the numbers that's on the periodic table. The mass number, what do we do? We're rounding that atomic uh, mass to a whole number. The protons, well, that comes right from the atomic number, also the electrons. How do we figure out the neutrons? We're going to take the mass number minus atomic number, and it has to be the mass number because that's the one that's rounded to a whole number. Okay, so again, let's do the first row together. Make sure to have your periodic table and a calculator with you. Okay, so you should be able to locate lithium. Okay, hopefully you found lithium to be Li. If you locate in that box, the atomic number is mm -hmm, mass number. I'm sorry, atomic mass and mass number. So again, the atomic mass is all the numbers on the periodic table, but the mass number is taking that number and rounding it to a whole. So the protons and electrons equals atomic number. So guys, this entire column's numbers should be the same as the protons and electrons columns. And the number of neutrons, I'm going to do some subtraction. So again, pause the video now, fill in the rest of the chart, and then play the video to check your answers. So hopefully you filled in the rest of this, and I'm going to go boom, boom, boom. Again, if you have questions uh, when we get to class, make sure that you ask me or a classmate. I will say right now, if you did get those answers, keep on going. If you did not get those answers, you might want to pause and double check your answers for the next row. Hopefully, again, those make sense. And if they don't, make yourself a note of it. Again, pause uh, if you're not getting them right and try AU or gold again. Hopefully it's getting easier. Hopefully it's making more sense. And the last one. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and you can figure out where things come from and how to calculate them. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, using the um, elements to make a little saying there. Okay, so what's an isotope? Let's finish off by saying fruits and vegetables come in different varieties. For example, a grocery store may sell three varieties of apples, the Granny Smith, the Red Delicious, Golden, Golden Delicious. So apple varieties can differ in color, size, texture, aroma, and taste. Just as apples come in different varieties, a chemical element can come in different quote-unquote varieties or isotopes. In this section, you'll learn how one isotope of an element differs from another. So at this point, again, read as you write. At this point, you need to just know that atoms can have, um, or the same element can have different atoms. And those atoms of that same element are going to have a different mass. Well, if it has a different mass, that means it's going to have different numbers of neutrons. So in an isotope, the number of protons and electrons stay the same, but the number of neutrons and mass is going to be different. So here's an example of neon's isotopes. Can you find what's similar about them? Hopefully that makes sense, protons and electrons. What's different then about them? 
the number of neutrons, which would make the mass different. So again, here's lithium as an example. Similar would be good and different would be good. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, a quickie quiz. Read, pause, see if you can come up with an answer. Hopefully that makes sense. Number two, hopefully that makes sense. All right, we'll see you in class.